house hacking. There's tons of videos on YouTube that talks about how great house hacking is, but I personally haven't seen a video where it talks about someone who's actually done a house hack with the whole process from start to finish and actually gives their honest feedback and true experience from everything, how much everything costs, their financial results, if they actually live for free, and overall, would they actually recommend it to someone who's thinking about doing it in the near future? I've personally been house hacking for the last year and a half with a three unit building. And in this video, I'm going to fully disclose all my finances and also my honest feedback and experience with house hacking for the last year and a half. I really wish someone would have made this video before I house hacked because I know it would have been a huge help. If you're only interested in certain parts of this video, such as the financial results, dealing with tenants, or my overall opinion on house hacking, feel free to jump along to certain sections of this video. There's going to be timestamps down below. Let's not waste any more time and jump right into the video. First off, we're gonna talk about is background. I originally got the idea from house hacking when I was 19 years old and had my very first internship. Within a first week or two of working, and it was really long work weeks, I was reading articles on how to retire early, and I happened to stumble across an article uh, from Bigger Pockets from Brandon Turner, all about house hacking. And then from there, they actually sparked my interest with house hacking. And for the next couple of years or so, I would read up all I could about house hacking from books, bigger pockets, or auto books, and just talking with people. It wasn't until I was 24 years old that I became really serious about buying my first property in order to house hack. I would come home from work and analyze a whole bunch of deals. In total, I probably analyzed about two to 300 different properties. And out of those different properties that I analyzed, I ended up checking out 23 different properties in person so i'd walk through and inspect all these different properties and then in the end i put in offers on two properties the first property ended up falling through because it was a wholesale deal but the second property i ended up offering in actually closed on it and that closed in june of 2019 at the age of 24. the property that i ended up buying is here in chicago and there's three separate unit with the top unit being duplexed up and the units needed a ton of work and money, which brings us into the next section of this video, and that's gonna be the financials. In this financial results section, we're gonna fully disclose all the finances when it comes to this three flat property that I am currently house hacking. So the full financial breakdown of how much the building cost, how much the renovations cost, how much I was able to increase the rents by, and also how much I was paying every month in my expenses. I ended up purchasing the property for $445,000. I did a 5% conventional loan, on the actual building and through the Freddie Mac special program called the Home Possible program, I was able to put down so little. And this was also a 30 year fixed mortgage with an interest rate of a 4.375 back when I closed in June of 2019. When purchasing the building, I also had to pay closing costs, what actually ended up being quite a bit of money. And I didn't realize before buying the building that closing fees would be so much money. In total, I spent just a little bit over 19,000. And the closing costs include anything from attorney fees, the title insurance, prepaid interest, property taxes, city stamp, and basically fees for anything you could think of from anything from processing, underwriting fees, wire transfer fees, carrier fees, delivery fees, title fees, and recording fees. And I wish I was joking about all these fees, but you pay a bunch of different fees and there's a bunch of different item lines. And in total, it added up to just over $19,000 for closing costs. So with my down payment and closing costs, I was in at $41,307, but that wasn't all the money that I had to bring to closing. There were some other adjustments and credits I received, and in total, that ended up being just a little bit above $10,000, and that was from property taxes and also rents. And I also negotiated $7,500 in closing credit with the previous seller because we both knew that the house required quite a bit of work and there was gonna be some initial repairs, and that just means I was able to bring $7,500 less to the closing table. So in total, I was able to buy this property for just a little bit over $23,000. And if you actually think about that, that's actually pretty mind blowing. I was able to buy almost a half a million dollars for only $23,000 out of pocket. Next, let's talk about my monthly expenses, otherwise known as your PITI, which is your principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. So my principal and interest that I was paying towards paying off the mortgage every single month and then the interest was $2,111. Every month you also have your property taxes that was adding to my escrow. So that was an additional 715. After that we have an insurance. So that was additional 151. Then also because I had less than 20% equity in the building, I also had to pay mortgage insurance, which was an additional $183. 
So every single month for PITI plus my PMI, which is your mortgage insurance, I was paying out of pocket $3,160. Next up, we're gonna do a full financial breakdown of the renovations. So like I said, this is a three unit building. So I initially moved into the top unit. And if you guys are interested, I have separate videos seeing what the actual units looked like before. And let me tell you, it needed a ton of work. Then also a separate video of what it looked like after. And I did a financial breakdown and walked through and showed you guys the before and afters and it looks completely different. But basically for the top duplex unit, it's a, a four bedroom, two bath, and I completely renovated the kitchen. So now it has white, uh, white cabinets, granite countertops, stainless steel appliances. I completely redid two of the bathrooms, painted everything, all of the rooms, has brand new windows, furnaces, a new AC, and basically all the bells and whistles to basically redo all of it. And in total, I spent just a little bit over $57,000 to do so. Next up, I ended up renovating the unit below, which is currently the unit that I live on, and I completely redid the kitchen. So once again, white cabinets, granite countertops, appliances. I also got a, a washer and dryer in there. I redid the bathroom and painted everything, and I ended up spending about $19,000 on my unit. Then lastly, I spent an additional $4,000 or so renovating the outside. So I did some work such as painting the staircases outside. I also got brand new gutters and then small things such as locks, but it ended up costing around $4,000. So in total for the renovations for the two units and the outside work, I ended up spending over $80,000. So with all the renovations and work I did to the units, I was able to significantly increase the value of the rent. So before I moved into the building, the top duplex unit was renting about $1,300 every month. But since I put all that money into it, I was able to actually have it rented out currently right now for $2,200 a month. So that was a huge jump in rent every month. Then for the middle unit, it was getting $950 before I ended up buying the building. But after the renovations I did, I'm pretty confident that I could get anywhere from $1,500 to $1,650 every single month just for this unit. And then for the bottom garden unit, I was getting also $950 every month. But after I bought the place, we tossed in the parking with the garage, and right now I collect $1,100 every single month. After I renovated it and also rented it out, I wanted to refinance, that way I could pull out some of the initial money that I spent on renovating it. And that's just a way to get back some of the cash in order so you could buy your next property. So when I got a value for my refinance, it actually went up in value up to $600,000. So that means right now I have an equity of about $155,000 and I only put about $80,000 of work into the property. With the refinance, I was able to take out $17,000. So that means I actually got $17,000 in cash and I was able to do another 30 year mortgage on this. This time a little bit better of an interest rate because I refinanced back in February of 2020. So this time I got locked in at a 30 year mortgage at a 3.875. And that just basically means my PITI was basically about the same as previously, but now I didn't have the mortgage insurance. So I was paying about $2,990 every month. So basically saving a couple hundred dollars every month. And that definitely helps in the real estate game. So the big question for the last year and a half of house hacking, do I live for free? And if you watched the last section of the video with a full financial breakdown, then you probably already know the answer. And that is yes. Every month I collect $3,300 in rent from both the top and bottom units combined. And if you subtract out my monthly expenses of my PITI, which is just below $3,000, that basically means I'm profiting $310 every single month if I don't have any maintenance or upgrades to do to the building, which is actually mind blowing to think about that I'm making $310 while living here for free. And this is a huge difference compared to just two years ago when I was paying about $1,200 every single month for rent. And that's not even the best part. I was also airbnb the extra two bedrooms on my floor back before this whole lockdown and I was getting an additional $700 to $800 every single month per those rooms. So that means I was getting an additional about $1,400 to $1,700, which is just crazy to think about on top of the extra money that I was making renting out the top and bottom units. So yes, it is very realistic if you find a great property that you could actually live somewhere for free and make some money while doing so. One of the biggest worries people tend to have when they're thinking about house hacking definitely has to be dealing with tenants. And I don't blame them because there are so many horror stories out there. But I truly believe if you do your research and also if you're patient, then you could ha actually have a positive experience with your tenants. And that's exactly how it's been for me for the last year and a half. It's been super positive. 
but that's because I did my research and I was patient. So when it was came time to after renovating the whole property, I was very patient and picky what kind of tenant I was gonna put into the unit. And I wanted someone that was really gonna treat it like their house and take care of it. And it actually took me three months to find the right family to rent it out to. And I'm so glad that I waited because right now I am super happy with the experience so far of renting it out. So next up, we're gonna talk about things I wish I would've considered before house hacking or I wish people would've just warned me about. So the first one's gonna be how time consuming the whole journey is. It's gonna take quite a bit of time to learn how the numbers work, how to look for properties, what are you looking for in these properties, closing the deal, and also just going through the whole renovation process and dealing with tenants. So all these require time, but it goes back to my other points. If you're patient and do your homework, you'll be just fine. Next, it's not gonna be a simple and a straightforward process. When I personally did the house hack, there was a lot of ups and downs, especially if I didn't know if I was gonna get the building, dealing with contractors, trying to get one up on you, or maybe just finding out something needed to be replaced that was a huge budget, but you just didn't account for it. So if you had the mentality that things aren't always gonna go as you planned, but if you're able to adjust to it and be flexible, then you're still gonna end up doing great. The last thing I wish someone would've warned me about is location. So in Chicago, beforehand, I was renting in one of the best neighborhoods in Chicago. There's tons of bars, restaurants, it's a very high-end part of the city. Once I fully committed to doing the house hack, I went from a completely part of town, so I was further out from the city, so that just means my commute to work was uh, about double now. Seeing friends meant that I had to take an Uber and I could no longer just walk there. So these are things that I probably just didn't consider beforehand or didn't realize that if I was gonna truly house hack and afford a three or four unit building, I was gonna have to live a little bit further out than what I was used to. So that's just something to be aware of. So finally, and one of the biggest questions I know I'm gonna get is would I recommend house hacking? And the short answer is yes, I would absolutely recommend it. There's a bunch of financial reasons why it makes sense to house hack, such as being able to live for free or close to it, and actually in my case, making money every single month, paying down your mortgage, and also appreciation. And there's tons of other, other benefits such as tax write-offs, and more we can save for a separate video. But that definitely doesn't mean the whole process is easy by any means. As we talked about, it definitely requires a lot of research and time. So if you had the mindset that you're fine with dedicating your time, money, and energy into doing this, I think you should absolutely do it. And it's definitely gonna pay off in the long term. Trust me. Well, that's it for my full, honest experience and full financial breakdown of house hacking for the last year and a half. If you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to smash that thumbs up button and it would really help me out if you guys would share this video. Maybe share it with a friend who's thinking about house hacking in the near future. Thanks for watching and this is Kevin, your financial tutor, signing off. Peace.